so just a little fun activity I want to do with everybody who's here today. We're doing a little uh, have you ever, not a never, ha have you never, but have you ever. So a thumbs up if you have ever done this or a thumbs down if you've never done this. Um, and I'm going to be kind of surprised to see if anybody hasn't done all of these because as I'm reading through them, this stuff is, if you have kids or have been around kids, I guarantee you're going to have a thumbs up for almost every one of these. So just a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you have or have not. Thumbs up if you have ever caught someone else's bodily fluid in your hand. You can type in the chat if you don't want to show yourself. You can just put yes in the chat or no in the chat if you just want to participate and don't have your cameras on. Most of us are pretty used to that, unfortunately. Thumbs up or thumbs down if you have ever used a child to get out of a social engagement you didn't really feel like attending. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> thumbs up or thumbs down if you've ever lied about your child's age to get a discount or to get into an event that costs less if they were younger. Ooh, there's a couple thumbs down on that one. Ooh, we got some honest people in this group. Um, thumbs up or thumbs down if you've ever sniffed someone's bottom in public. <laughs> thumbs up or thumbs down if you've ever called your child or another kid by the sibling's name or your own name or a brother's or sister's, your own brother or sister's name. I do that way too often. Again, those of you who don't have your cameras on, you can participate in the chat by answering yes or no with us. Don't feel like you can't participate. Thumbs up or thumbs down if you've ever been more nervous than your child at a parent-teacher meeting. We have them coming up, so if you're nervous about them. Ooh, some parents are honest about it, being nervous. Thumbs up or thumbs down if you've ever bought a child a present that you secretly wanted to play with yourself. Yeah, you got some, you got some interesting parents out there. I'm kind of curious at those presents. What about if you've ever laughed when a kid has said a swear word? It's very hard to hide those kind of things. Um, what about if you've ever found yourself using a phrase that you used to hate your own parents using? <laughs> some of you are like, oh man, I'd have to look like my parents. <laughs> How about if you've ever lost a toy of theirs that you found irritating? Somehow it disappeared. What about if you've ever watched an entire episode of a kid's show and then realized 15 minutes later that there was no kids in the room with you anymore? Yep. Ooh, some of you say no. I don't know how you make it through that. Um, what about if you've skipped entire paragraphs or pages of storybooks just so you can make it go faster? Ms. Jacobs, hide your eyes on this one. We're, we're skipping pages. She's not looking. It's okay. You can share. Um, what if you've ever taken advantage of a child's lack of economic savvy and paid them 25 cents just to pull weeds for two hours or do a chore for two hours straight for 25 cents? Yeah. Some of us are nice enough to pay our parents well, or our kids well. What if you spent more time on the toilet than you needed to just to have a break? Yeah. What if you've Googled your sick child's symptoms and then extra points if you've lost sleep from the results? <laughs> have you Googled symptoms? I think we all have gotten on the computer at some point. What if, have you ever told your kid, I'll give you to the count of three, and then either kept counting or delayed the, tle the two to three, or you reached three and still didn't do anything? Yeah, I think we've all counted the three and kind of missed that last count. Yeah. Uh, what about prayed for rain or mild illness to avoid early morning soccer practice or Saturday morning practices? Yeah, sometimes we don't feel like getting out of bed or just going at all. Uh, 
What about had entire meals consisting of your children's dinner scraps? You knew they weren't going to eat anything. Yep. What about accidentally put, hit your head, or your kid's head on the door frame while carrying them? Yeah, mine's been the car door. <laughs> I think I've done that to every one of my three kids. So, you know, if something's wrong, I'm sorry. That's what happened. Um, uh, had or the, Here's the last one. Had to think twice before offering someone a lift in your car or letting them use your toilet because of the kids. Yep. So we don't feel so bad. There's a lot of people out there. Now, how many of you, for the very final one, how many of you are sitting with some kind of children's candy left over from Halloween in front of you ready to eat while you're sitting here today? Some of you. Somebody said they were eating ice cream. So, you know, was that you, Stephanie, eating ice cream? <laughs> I, well, the rest of us are raiding the children's Halloween candy. Well, that was a, a little fun activity to get you all to open up and feel a little more comfortable about us today. So um, I'm hoping that you all feel a little comfortable to kind of express yourselves today. When I ask for feedback, we want your opinions. We want your ideas. The rest of the team has been very open about that too. Um, I think I can speak for the rest of the board when I say that we're all trying to figure this out a little at a time. So please share when we ask for your ideas and input. And we're going to be asking for a lot of volunteer input today. So we're hoping that, you know, you think think a little of ahead that we're all here. We're all doing the same thing. All of our families are kind of feeling the same at this point and trying to just figure it out a little at a time. Um, so we're hoping that you, you feel comfortable doing that. All right, we're moving on. So John, can I have roll call and um, quorum, please? So I'm so used to being on Microsoft Teams. I was looking at the top like, where's the mute button? It's down at the bottom on this one here. Huh? OK, so um, I did not make it through every name quite yet to see who was membership. Um, and I did get a couple of names put into the list here. Um, <clears throat> so give me one quick second while I switch back over here. Um, so to help out for this first time, so we can definitely keep rolling. Um, if you have not joined as of yet, I'm going to do it in reverse real quick. If you have not, thank you for the other name. If you have not joined as of yet, can you quickly in the chat window just put a, a quick message that says not joined yet? Um, and then I will subtract from the total. As long as we have 10, then we'll keep moving. So right now we do have enough. Okay, so Kim, what that means is that we have a total of uh, so 18 um, that are available, uh, that are members. Um, that's a good number. Um, instead of calling off each of the names, um, we're going to say that because we have that many listed here today that are paid members, and only two people said they haven't joined yet, we're going to subtract that from the total number that I have listed here and say that we have a quorum for today. But you're on the on the part there, John. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's good. We we have quorum, and now um, I want to take a look at the previous minutes. That, uh, John, do you want to look over any of the minutes, or I can call out and see if anybody has any. Uh, the minutes should have been sent. They were sent out to you with the agenda, so I hope most of you had a chance. Any of the members had a chance today to look over them at some point. Um, over the past few days and see if there were any any updates from the last meeting. Does anybody have any? 
any changes to the previous minutes? What I did pull up is that I did notice on at 6.30, John, the position of RISE PTA president will, will be filled by Stephanie, should be treasurer. That was the only thing I noticed. Right, I will make that change. So. So any other changes anyone else have? All right, if there are no other, are there any objections to that change or any other changes? If not, we will go ahead and approve those or mark them down as approved for previous minutes from 929. All right, thank you, John. All right, for the financial report today, Stephanie, our treasurer. Hey, this is Stephanie. Um, well, we don't have any financials yet. Ms. G, Abby wants you to join the PTA. Um, and so we have not, um, I haven't put together any reports. That's thank you. Um, but do you want me to talk now about the financial committee or later? You can explain it now a little bit about what you're looking for and how you're going to go forward. Okay. Um, so for the budget and financial committee, that's one of the committees that you can join tonight if you want. Um, I will be running it. And so basically there will be three primary responsibilities. Um, the first one is to help create the budget. Um, and we've had a lot of guidance from Ms. Jacobs on that as far as what we, um, what she'd like to see um, us spending money on. Um, so for this year, it will be kind of now while we're still in our formation stage. And then going forward, it will typically be over the summer, you know, in July, August. And we want to have that approved usually by the end of August, like around the typical first day of school. Um, after, oh, so other than helping create the budget, so you actually get some input on, you know, what the PTA is spending and how much should be allocated to different expenses. Um, there will be, uh, I'd like to get help with a monthly review of the financials. So I'll be putting out basically um, kind of a, just a budget versus actual of what we have planned to spend for the year and then what we have spent so far as well as just a list of transactions, you know, like what checks have we written, what has cleared, um, so what's gone through our bank account. And then, so just kind of a monthly check, just to make sure that whoever's in the treasurer position is spending the money how we want it to be spent and that um, that there's no, no transactions that you wouldn't expect to see. And then finally, there's a financial review form that is due at the end of the year. And so we need three people who are not check signers and not staff members at the school, just to kind of sign off that like, yes, all these financials are correct. And you know, this is, everything is according to our guidelines and our rules. Um, so I think that I, I like, I have a lot of accounting and finance background. So if you don't, but you are interested in kind of like, how are we spending our money and um, kind of helping with this committee, then please feel free to, um, we can do as much like training or ask as many questions as you want to. And the more people that are involved, honestly, the better um, in terms of transparency. I want everything to be, I want everything to be, Thank you. I want everything to be as transparent as possible and um, just make sure that everyone is kind of on the same page with that. Thank you, Stephanie. I know her dogs are always have to get involved in the Zoom meetings no matter where we are. But welcome to life, right? I'm just surprised my kids aren't jumping on my lap at the same time. So <laughs> I understand completely. We're all here. We're lucky to be here sometimes. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about the committee and on what the budget and finance committee is going to be. Um, so we're hoping that you definitely, if you're interested in that type of thing, and even if you're not, you just want some experience just to check it out. 
feel free to join. It's not, um, we're kind of learning along the path and we do have some people. Stephanie is an amazing, she already, she knows what she's doing a lot with that. So she can kind of point you in the right direction, at least to get us started on it. Um, so feel free to join that group. And I'll get more into the committees in a few minutes, but for now, that's that's the breakdown of the, the finance part of it. Unfortunately, right now, though, we don't have any access to our money yet because we are so new and we're still waiting on a lot of paperwork. Um, so that brings you to my my report. First of all, I want to say thanks again to everybody who attended on the September 29th meeting. We've had a lot of interest from the beginning, so I want to kind of play on that and I don't want to lose your interest and I apologize that we are kind of there's a lot not that we can't do right now and i've had people email me saying hey let's can we do this hey can we do that even our team has been like hey let's do this we can't do a lot of things yet but we are pushing so hard to get that stuff done so that we can get started on this so right now Ms. Jacobs has been helpful on the whole other side of what she can do. And she's started a lot with the school. So we're grateful for having her doing a lot of the stuff that we could, we're gonna take over later. But as of right now, we're kind of at a standing point where we can't do a lot. But please bear with us because we still want you here. We still want your help. We still need your help. And um, we apologize that we can't get anything to you as soon as we'd like to. Um, but I wanna give you a rundown of what we've been doing. First, Jenna Jen Jennings, if you're familiar, she's the Kentucky Pet PTA office manager, amazing person to get a hold of. She has the current signed bylaws from us in her possession. What we're waiting on is the return with the stamped approval from the Kentucky Department, the, the PTA leadership departments. So we're just waiting for that kind of stamp of approval from them. Also, a fax was sent out on October 16th to apply for our EIN number, and we need that too to also do a lot of financials and information. Um, I had to, I stepped forward and kind of tried to push a lot of that stuff in. So I tried to talk to them online and get the online one done. I called them and a bunch of failed attempts. They told me I had to fax it, and that was the quickest way to do it. Unfortunately, they said it could take up to 45 days, which brings us to November 29th would be the latest that we'd have it. So we're still looking at the end of November before we can even get the bank account set up. We can get anything like that set up. Um, we can't do, we don't even have access to our member money yet, but we are still taking membership because as soon as that is approved and everything's done, that money will get sent to us and we'll get everybody's membership money. Uh, we'll not be able to participate in the national PTA reflections. If anybody's familiar with that from other PTAs, we unfortunately will not make it through the 2021 school year just because we're behind on this paperwork. The deadlines are coming too fast and we're not gonna make it. So we'll think about it for next year at the end of this year to help the next PTA leadership kind of work on that next year, but we won't make it for this year. Um, Danielle, our VP has created a Facebook page that is going to offer a lot of up-to-date announcements as well as a place to view upcoming events, things like that. So we thank Danielle for getting that started for us. If you're not a member, go ahead and follow us on Facebook. Um, so each current officer is beginning a guide or kind of a, a, a book for their positions, a little bit of a background of what they're, what they're doing as we go. That way, any future elected officers and people who are interested in being a leadership in the PTA, because we're, very, we're the very first group we're going to help you kind of as we set it up that way we can pass it on to the next group so that's what we've all kind of agreed to start doing um and then the the big thing this week or this month has been the vice presidents daniel and angela are beginning stages right now of forming two committees um not only is uh our treasurer stephanie working on the budget and finance committee but daniel and angela are going to be running two committees themselves each. So we're gonna have four total committees to get started. The two Angela is taking over are class representatives and fundraising. And then Danielle is gonna do every child in focus and membership. And uh, let's see, they'll talk a little bit about that here in a few minutes in detail, but those are the four that we've agreed on and kind of to at least get started that we can do without having to worry about the funding at this point. We also have Dr. Schroeder, the RISE curriculum coach. He's gonna start us off for the very first lunch and learn. And uh, 
The first one's going to be held at 11 to 11.45 on number, November 10th, covering the topic Google Classroom. We've kind of all discussed the whole idea of parents having trouble still navigating the Google Classroom. Assessments have been due, so teachers are struggling getting assessments in and the right and the correct way. So Google Classroom is a topic that we'd like to get covered as quickly as possible, just so that everybody's a little more familiar with that. So that's going to be our very first Lunch and Learn topic. Uh, we encourage families to submit any questions ahead of time on the event on Facebook. That way, Dr. Schroeder can be a little bit more prepared and be ready for answering any questions that you definitely need, know you need help with and he wants to be able to cover. So if you have a question that you have already in your mind and you're not really sure about you want covered, you can go ahead and share it on our event page in the Facebook group or um, you can even email it to us either way. Um, otherwise, there's also going to be a 15 minute session at the end that you can ask any questions kind of face-to-face -face live questions with them and we're going to have those record recorded if you can't attend i know that 11 to 11 45 in the afternoon is kind of hard for a lot of people but we chose that because it's right before lunch <laughs> so the kids are still busy and at the same time um it, it's still a lunch time that you can kind of sit maybe away from the kids hopefully for a few minutes um, even if you jump on late, you can jump on late and kind of jump into the question and answer session. But as long as you um, can get a chance to ask some of those burning questions to get those answers to. So we also would like input in a few minutes when I open the discussion up. I'd like some input. So think about some topics that we might want to cover during these lunch and learns. Um, Google Classroom was the first one. And the second one was um, the STEM curriculum, also Dr. Schroeder. Um, that's another topic we want to cover. It may not be the next one, but it's a topic that we might want to cover for answering questions to families and um, anybody interested. The PTA membership goal for teachers and staff at RISE is right now, we're trying for 100%. So teachers, I'm calling on you right now. Teachers and staff, we want you first. Um, only because if you guys are getting involved, and you're 100% for us and you give us our, your $5 pledge and say, hey, we're, we're right behind Rise with everybody else, uh, we want the parents involved too. So we're gonna push you to push them. If you're involved and you're, you're proud of Rise, then we are too. So our goal for teachers right now is 100% and the and staff. And I think we're, we're not too far away. And now that some, I think some of you said you did, joined already today. So I think we're, we're getting there. We're almost there. We don't have too many of us. Um, and then the next next meeting is going to be November 30th at 6 p.m. So we hope that you can make those that that next meeting too. Um, does anybody have any questions of what I've covered? I know it's a lot, but we're we're pushing forward. Open up to any questions. All right. If there are no other questions for me, then I'll go ahead and turn it over to Angela, our vice president. She can talk about fundraising and the class reps committee. Hi, everyone. I am doing fundraising and class reps. Fundraising, I would like any and everyone's input, advice to help us raise money. Um, what you have done in the past, what you've seen has worked for other schools. Um, we have a little hiccups yet because we are, we don't have our bylaws and EIM, but we can still start raising money and getting some partnerships. Um, so we'd really, really, really like everyone, if they can, just to join or at least, you know, shoot me an email of any, any input that you have. And the class parent, class reps, I would um, ideally like two parents from every class to kind of be my our go between between the parents and the teachers for each class. So that's what I would like. If you would like, please let me know. All right. Thank you, Angela. Um, Danielle. I it is completely up to you if you I know you were having trouble you said so if you're if you're not I can go ahead and talk to everybody about the member or the yeah the membership in every child and focus group
Danielle wasn't feeling too good. So she told, she, uh, I think I'll go ahead and explain a little bit about what Danielle has been doing. She's working on the membership and every child in focus. And what the two groups are, the membership is going to be focused a lot on um, how to get people involved, how to get uh, everybody from every area involved, whether it be students or parents or community or teachers or staff, any of those people. So it's just a membership committee to come up with ideas that you can encourage, kind of, um, you know, help do volunteer um, recruiting, things like that, help do, uh, trying to think, um, like just incentives for volunteers, I'm trying to think of the word for it, incentives for volunteers to come on board, things like that. Uh, and the Every Child in Focus is a little different. It comes down from the national PTA. The Every Child in Focus is more fo focused on um, diversity and inclusion kind of thing. But we're pairing up with RISE, the RISE team who's already started off amazing job with this rise and shine morning stuff. So we're kind of tailing off the back of what they're doing and adding to it for the month. So if, they're to if their topic is specifically like, um, I don't know, like we're specifically talking about Nash or Black History Month or something like that, we will do more activities related to the, what the month activity is going to be. So we're just kind of adding to it. And we may find some that other ones do not fit exactly involved with that, but we'll be doing adding on to other things that are going on that month. So if anybody's interested in being part of that one, that's also an option. Um, any questions on any of those two memberships or those new committees at this point? I am actually going to send out a link here in a couple seconds, and the, I think it's the next slide for you to sign up for those committees. So if you are currently interested, I will get you the link in like a couple seconds as soon as Director Jacobs gets a chance to speak, and you can sign right up. But if there's no questions for me or anything else related to those, then Director Jacobs, you're up. All right. Thanks, everybody. It's nice to see you all. Um, it's it's almost weird for me to be on this so late at night since I'm usually on it so early in the morning um, recording our rise and shines. <laughs> so if I break out in uh, in our pledge, that's uh, I'm, I'm thinking of that. Um, I'm going to just share my screen really quickly, um, and then Mrs. Boyd, I'll give it. You'll still be able to kind of take over from there. I'm just going to. Uh, I want to just share one screen. All right. Okay. Is everyone able to see my screen? If I could just see a thumbs up. So I've got it. Okay, great. Um, so I, I just wanted to, to give an update to everyone in regards to where we are at with our target service plus. Uh, so I asked parents to fill out just an interest survey, just really wanting to get feedback as to um, those families that would be interested in coming in for Target Services Plus. It is completely voluntary. It is not going to change instruction in the sense that this would all happen between during our asynchronous time. Um, and just wanted to give everyone kind of the, the latest and greatest, the, the freshest data that we have, which will then work towards to make sure that we can um, meet all of our families who requested services, their needs. And so just a, a recap on the, the difference really, currently we are providing targeted services to our scholars who met criteria. Um, and that criteria was listed out in regards to whether our scholars have an IEP or uh, EL students, English as a second language, or that met the criteria of below the 40th percentile for last year's winter map data. Um, so that's what we use to really provide that targeted service during this time right now, which happens on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, and I can tell you it is like the best part uh, getting to, to see our scholars live uh, in the flesh. So it's a, it's a lot of fun for us. Um, and we do that certainly safely following all the protocols uh, masks, temperature checks, 
uh, making sure that we are within six feet distance. We don't have any more than 15 individuals in a in one space. So we're, we're following all of those protocols. And at the 21st of October board meeting, it was announced that we could, each school would have autonomy to open up Targeted Services Plus. Um, and so really my vision for Targeted Services Plus is to make sure that we can get all scholars um, in the schoolhouse, again, voluntary, um, before we come back to a full in-person, proposed full in-person school in January. And so this just gives an idea, really a breakdown of all 63 families that were able to um, to uh, take the survey and also just gives an idea for us as to the number of scholars within each classroom and then also um, making sure that we have an idea of what their transportation needs are, whether their transportation needs um, need to come from the district or if their families are able to provide that transportation. Um, because what was most important for me in making sure that we could roll out Targeted Services Plus is that, that we were making sure that all families had access to this if this was something that they wanted. Um, and so we will work, um, this is this is something that's just fresh. The, the survey just closed on Friday. In fact, I, I kept it open just a, a, a hair longer. And, and did capture a few other voices. So we will look at this as a school community to really see what this will look like. Um, but what this could look like is providing families, providing scholars that opportunity to be in classrooms um, with their classroom teacher or with another staff member, either between hours of one through three or two through four. So that's, that's something that um, we'll give more details out and um, keep you updated on, but this is just kind of wanted to, to kind of give this information. And, um, and then the other piece of information is, is that we were able to, and this is where we will be happy to um, pass the baton off and, and share that with our partnership, obviously with the PTA is our, um, our t-shirt, our, our kind of apparel fundraising that we're going to do. It was passed by the board on the 26th that said, yes, you can go ahead and have a fundraiser. And so we are working on making sure that we um, have everything ready so we can send that out to you. It's a great fundraiser for us in the sense, like we just wanna get shirts in people's hands, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> um, that that's really our main goal. But what's also nice too, is you're able to order it straight through the site. So we aren't left with um, a surplus of, you know, too many shirts of one size that, 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 aren't, that aren't moving um, and having to keep those year after year. So, um, we're excited to try it. I know that um, a lot of the staff members are like, can you please, I'd like to get something a little bit longer than a t-shirt. Um, Dr. Schroeder is always asking for his fourth zip up little uh, long sleeve. So we're, we're going to make it happen. Um, it's just taking a while. So we, uh, we just appreciate everyone's patience on it because that, um, that's something new for me too. I didn't realize that we had to um, have the board pass a fundraiser, but I think that what I do like about that too is that, that we're really um, making sure that we're not overburdening families with having just, you know, fundraisers every single day. Um, so that is all that I have. And I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And then I just also wanted to say that I'm I'm really happy and um, delighted to have Miss Mrs. Suzanne Davis, our gifted and talented teacher, is here in um, in our little Zoom meeting right now. And then also Miss Gutierrez, our first grade teacher, is also here. And we're just really going to um, have a, a rotating basis where you'll kind of. Uh, you know, come to the PTA meetings, you never know what teacher you're going to find um, and kind of keep that going through the rest of the year. And uh, Mrs. Boyd, that's all that I have. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Ms. Ditter, appreciate that. <laughs> well, 
thank you, Director Jacobs. Does anybody have any questions for her on the little bit she shared? This is the area I thought everybody would be lined up to talk uh, to ask. Or maybe you guys are just tired of hearing from me because I do feel like I'm sending you like an email a day. So uh, <laughs> all, right. all right. Well, if anyone does have any questions, um, please, I hope you know that you can you can always email me. Um, that's really important to me that I'm always connecting with our families and responding within a timely manner. Or if you have any questions here, you can pop those in as well. So um, you know where to find me. I'm I'm, I'm always here, usually. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Uh, you mentioned a couple teachers in here, so thank you for joining us, Ms. Davis and Ms. Gutierrez. We uh, are happy to have a couple teachers involved. Is Do either uh, one of you want to kind of give us an update of what the teachers are thinking right now and what they need? If you heard anything, um, kind of tell us what you need, <laughs> even if it's you personally. If, is there anything that you all expect of the PTA? Kind of give us a heads up. You don't have to share it all if you don't want, but just thought I'd throw it out there. not usually this quiet <laughs> for some reason my camera doesn't work but we just want to thank all the parents and we know that this is a partnership and we couldn't do this without you all and I just want to say thank you to all the parents who have been so kind to all of the teachers and so helpful and just you know, it was so fun to actually meet parents and students in the ride bys that we've had, but we really appreciate that and appreciate any of the little things that you gave us that was so nice and so thoughtful. But we're, I know for me, can't speak for everyone, we're so pleased to be at RISE. It's just a wonderful school and we're just so lucky to have you beautiful daughters with us. Suzanne, that was so sweet. Um, I, I, that's, that's absolutely true. And I know uh, Ms. Gutierrez has probably spent all day on Google Meet too. So she probably, <laughs> she probably is just wanting to take a rest from that. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, we've got just incredible educators working here just to do what's best. And, and we just appreciate just your uh, your grace and your ability to be flexible as we kind of navigate and through all of the, the consistent changes that we have, um, our number one goal always is to make sure that we're providing the best environment for our scholars. I'm glad you two kind of brought up the point that we're kind of, we're working together. I know that this is it's hard because you guys are in the school sometimes together and you have a chance to be together and kind of talk it out. And we're on the outside kind of like, I don't know what's going on. So that's the whole point of this PTA. We've all, I've heard it over and over again from parents. We all want the communication. That's what we're missing. We need to make sure that is the top priority. And I think that most of the parents that I've spoke to that are in them, that are members now and who are wanting to join are, thinking the same thing. So we want to keep that as a partnership, something that we can all be together forming to help our scholars out just now and in the future. So are there any other questions? I want to open it up last time. Any questions to any of us about the committees or Ms. Jacobs or teachers, but anything currently going on? You can also use the chat. I think I have it open and I'm trying to keep up with it. So. Feel free to jump in. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm sure you said this, but when, Ms. Jacobs, when is the Targeted Services Plus able to start? So, so the next step really is for us to look really 
at this data um, and to find out how we would be able to bring in. So we already know for scholars who have their own transportation from one to three, we would be able to bring them in on certain dates. Um, our scholars who, who rely on that district transportation from two to four, we want to make sure that we can also offer that same service to them. So really the next step for us as a staff is to look at um, what it what it looks like in the next upcoming it, it certainly won't be something that we won't we'll start next week um, with report card uh, with parent teacher conferences but looking to start towards the end of November and kind of carry that through November and December before we go on winter break um, and really the ex the opportunity is to um, give our scholars an opportunity to see what it looks like in here to engage with their teachers, obviously in that in-person environment um, and do some of those things that they would probably do, well, they would do during the asynchronous time. So those small groups, nothing that would uh, rely on their on their Chromebook. Um, so we're, we, we, even though our, our, our scholars that do come for targeted services now, we do ask them to, to bring their Chromebooks. Um, it's truly more of like a troubleshooting thing to make sure that they can access X, Y, or Z. Um, we are not, we're not on them. We're on them enough. So we're, we're happy to take that break from them truly. So yes, you can look for, so news will be coming out sometime next week, um, but we won't be looking to start anything till the end of November um, and carry that through before until winter break. And that I know is, is definitely um, a, a need that many families have expressed that opportunity to come into the school. Um, and, and we feel that through Targeted Services Plus, this is an opportunity for us to do that. Um, but we also respect and know that doesn't work for every family and, and that's okay. And it's completely voluntary and it's, it's not part of any of the um, synchronous learning that happens between nine and noon. Thanks for the question. Anybody else have questions? All right, then we're moving on to the new business for today. So a little heads up about some of the activities going on. Um, I just want, give me a thumbs up or write in the chat if you're familiar with Member Hub at this point. If you've ever used Member Hub for other PTAs or um, have joined recently. So some of you have had some experience with it in the past others not sure or haven't yet. So what Member Hub is, it's available for all PTAs from national down, and it pretty much gives us a way to communicate a lot of things faster and to make sure that you have information about the events coming up. We can send messages to it. We can kind of make a, there's forums available in there and everybody can communicate from parent to parent. So it kind of opens it up for a chance to communicate on a level of us being a big community. And We've done a little bit of looking into it. It's free for us to use. So it's kind of perfect. It's everything we need. And we decided to go ahead and kind of start collecting people there. That way you, you don't have to be a member of PTA to join this part. What you just need to do is sign up for the member hub. And then we can get the communication out to you as fast as we get it. And we can get it to you quick and easy. You'll have access to all the upcoming PTA meetings, any events we're doing. Um, kind of anything we want to share. We're also planning on using this. Um, Angela has agreed to use this too, she thinks, for the, um, the class reps, which will be helpful to just join a hub that's specific to your classroom that you're part of. And that way, if there's anything that the teacher specifically talks with our class reps about and they want to share to all the parents just in that classroom, you'll have access to that. And that way we're not bombarding, you know, other teachers other parents of teachers that aren't involved in that classroom activity. Hope that makes sense. So I'm showing you some of the events and if you, I think you can see my screen. Can you see the member hub? Is that what's up? Okay. Um, so the member hub, this is what the member hub looks like. If you just went onto your dashboard, it has the upcoming events. I already put in our next, uh, our meeting for today. 
no school coming up tomorrow. And then the lunch and learn is our next lunch and learn thing. And you'll be able to see that on your dashboard when you sign in. And that way you can't mistake what's coming up. If you notice the hub section, um, everyone is gonna be part of the everyone section. If you are not a member of PTA and you don't have to be, there is a section in your welcome part that has a chance for you to sign up. So even if you don't get that link here today, you can sign up at any point, it's in the member hub. I will give you the link in like two seconds on how to join this. And I ask that you do it as soon as possible. You don't have to do it right this second, but I will also send it out in email to the people who have it. So if you don't have, if you don't have your email and you didn't get an email from me today about this thing, please put your email at least in the comments. That way we have this and I can send the link to you if you don't get it right away. If not, I'm sending it out right now. Let me copy this for you. Sign up for member hub. The link is in the chat right now to sign up specifically for the member hub. This can, brings you to be a member of the RISE PTA. So as soon as you use that link, you'll sign up for our RISE and you'll get all of our RISE information. You'll be in the everyone hub and you'll get every update for that everybody else gets. Don't put that one loops around the bottom. Don't want me to loop this one around the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want me to. The other thing about that is I'm going to put another link in here. If you're already a member of ours, whoops, hang on. I accidentally sent that to Danielle only. Somehow my thing was changed. I apologize. Let me just get this set up. All right, there's the link for that goes to member hub. So that'll get you all the information of updates, sign up for it. And then the link that I'm sending out the second link is actually for our new form that is also in that once you become a member, you'll have access to the forms. And I'll show you real quick where the sign up section is. This is where our volunteer sign up section is. So all of those committees that you just heard about, all those great committees, that those of you jumped on and wanted to be a part of, you can sign up through the volunteer interest in the sign up section of your member hub. So that's what's great about this member hub too. If there's any volunteer interest, we will put it up there. Or if there's any opening positions, we can put it up there and then you'll be able to access it instantly. You'll be able to see what's available and how, if you wanna sign up, you can sign up. It's pretty quick and easy. There's an app for it and there's also online, you can use their web form. So I'll give you a minute or two. Uh, some of you may be clicking those links. You can go ahead and sign up now if you'd like. We have a few extra minutes. And if anybody has any questions, you can throw them out to me now. If you see anything on there that you're questioning or you have trouble right now, you can go ahead and do that. What I'd like to do is um, either myself or somebody else on our team is to put up a video on how to use Member Hub, kind of give you an update on our, our Facebook page or something about how to, to manage this member hub section. Um, there are some challenges we found in the hub section. Um, you, you automatically are part of the everyone hub, but you do have access to join your other hubs, which are really just like joining other communication groups is how I look at it. But does anybody have any questions as you're kind of navigating over, some of you navigating over to use that? Can I ask a more general question or is there an, another time where we're gonna discuss some other things? You can go ahead and throw it out there now. Okay. Um, can't help but notice <laughs> looking around in the group that um, there are a lot of white parents in this group and not a lot of parents of color. And so I, I'm wondering um, how we could maybe reach out and make sure that um, all of our parents are having their voices heard Absolutely. Um, that is one of the topics that we in the Every Child in Focus group has kind of talked about getting involved in. Um, what we are looking to do, especially for that group, is getting somebody to represent at least each type of parent that we have in the school. And that's mainly because we're going to be representing the students that way. So it makes sense to have at least somebody represented in each group that we're going to talk about. Um, so yes, I mean, 
I would suggest, since you're interested in that, to join the Every Child in Focus type group and kind of push that. You can also do the membership group if you're interested in kind of jumping on that side and getting more of a member, overall member push. Um, anybody else can throw other suggestions out for that topic if you want. We could possibly in one of the parent reps group or the teacher try to encourage them that way with the other, you know, in our classroom, try to ask the other parents to join. I can tell you that we just got the list and um, Danielle, since she she's not talking much, she she has gotten a list from Miss Jacobs and her team on what they're going to be covering for the next month. So having kind of a few steps ahead of what kind of topics we're gonna to be covering, we could kind of help bring some parents and families in that way and say, hey, we're covering this kind of, this This is coming up. Does anybody wanna be involved in this kind of topic? It might draw some people in too, just an idea. I don't know off the top of my head what next, what this month is covering. Do you, Ms. Jacobs? Yes, uh, we're, cover, we're, we're talking about in Rise and Shine, Native American heritage. Um, and, and I just want to thank Ms. Mattingly, too, because it, it's one of the most beautiful things about this school is truly we want every single girl, regardless of her skin color, her socioeconomic background, all of that, we truly want our scholars to feel as if they are breaking that glass ceiling when they walk through our doors. And, and we can't do that when we don't have everyone represented. Um, and so I think that's, it's it's paramount for all of us. Um, if for, for me too, as, as the, the leader of this school, that the head learner is to make sure that everyone feels that this is a space that they can be a part of. Um, so thank you, Ms. Manningly, for, for bringing that up. I think I would just also add that that is, um, you know, one of the topics that we've talked about in some of our leadership meetings is, you know, what are some of the problems that we encountered maybe with other PTAs that we had served on in the past? And I think, you know, I personally just always felt like it was very cliquish. And I'm, you know, usually in the majority of uh, working moms that look a certain way and blah, blah, blah. So I think that um, it's something that we're definitely talking about and working to overcome, but we also, I mean, I don't have any great ideas. So if anyone does have great ideas on how to get more parents involved, um, you know, I think there's a certain stigma about PTA that, um, you know, it requires a certain amount of time or a certain amount of effort or a certain commitment. And um, yeah, I would love to see as many parents involved and get as many different voices as we can. So John just shared in the chat um, stuff that came down from the National PTA on engagement. There's an actual link that takes you to diversity, equity, and inclusion information on how to get other people involved. If anybody wants to take a chance to look at that later, um, might be something to look at. And if anybody that, has any information or what worked for other schools, let us know what has worked in the past for you. I know that I, I definitely feel the same way on the whole PTA stigma. No matter what, people have this vision and this tunnel vision of what PTAs are. And even if it's not about putting a lot of work in, it just has this, this idea. Everybody's got this idea in their head of what PTAs are. And I'm, I'm trying to get away from that. But I, that's kind of the hard thing. I'm trying to make it open, to make it a little bit more fun. We're trying to make it so that it's not so rigid and formal this is like we're here to ask questions and answer questions so um i have no problem answering questions and you can email me 16 times a day if you want i don't i try to answer in fact i answered everybody today that has emailed about not making the meeting tonight so just trying to get back and feedback from everybody else is what we want 
I think as a, a new school and a new PTA, I think it's just going to take showing people that we can be different from other schools. Um, Cause if you think about the historical context, you know, schools were segregated and when they desegregated, it wasn't a very welcoming thing. And to have that, you know, that's our recent history in this country. And so if your grandparent wasn't welcome in the school and your parent wasn't welcome in the school, then you're probably not gonna feel very welcome in the school either. So I think we have to kind of be able to to say, hey, you know, we're we're gonna change that. We're we're breaking away from that mold. So and maybe as a um, you know, as we offer, we're able to offer more programs, more interaction. That's a way we can do that. Thank you, Lindsay, for sharing though. No, that's definitely a topic that we want to be brought up. So anybody else have any more input, any ideas? We have to remember though too, we, we can bring people from all over. So if you know somebody who believes in our children, they can be a member and they can come join us and they can share their input. It doesn't necessarily have to, it may take a little time to get our families involved because they may feel a little lenient, especially now since we're not really involved in the school, being in the school. But something to think about is to pull other people that you may know personally, they may be able to share. All right, so with that kind of in mind, the next new business was goals and engagement, which was kind of what we were gonna cover between diversity and inclusion and just the number overall. So I said earlier that our number was looking at 100% of the staff. We don't have a huge school, so our staff is a lot lower and we can do that. But the same thing with parents and families, we'd like to get um, a pretty good engagement. So does anybody have any input on what a typical PTA or what you think that our school should do. I don't have a lot of PTA ba background. So if you'd like to share something about your PTA engagement in the past. Anybody have any feedback on uh, what a typical parent or group family engagement part is, the percentage wise for the overall school? I know what I would like. <laughs> I would like 100% of the staff. And if we could get 70% of the families. That might be hopes and dreams, but that's what I would like. <laughs> Aim high. That's okay. Does anybody have any background on what the percentage of their old schools have been as far as family engagement for even membership? From my experience as a grandmother at Rise, of Rise Scholars in first grade with Miss Heisel, in the previous years when Danielle was younger and I was active in her PTA from kindergarten through high school, the majority of the parents, if you're lucky, you got 50%. And part of that reason being, unfortunately, in days gone past, and hopefully we're going to change that with Rise, that if you were not from the upper level income, you did not get involved in PTA because that was considered considered for the wealthy, not for the normal calm to calm and run Joe that worked at the factory or at the restaurant or the stay at home mom or whatever the way they do their livelihood at home because each person you know has to do their own on that i think somehow we need to try to get the word out that this is not only just for the people that are 
wealthy, but we want everybody to come and feel a part of it, no matter where you're at social economically. It should not matter, and hopefully we can change that with Rod. I'll add on to that just a little bit. I think that's a really important point, but just like um, like the meeting tonight being at six o'clock, that might be very difficult for some people to attend, especially if you are a single parent or um, are working or just for a variety of reasons. So I know we've all, we were all able to, to make it, but um, I don't know if there's been any discussion about kind of surveying the families to see when would be best and maybe hosting. I know we don't want to host like a ton, but maybe if, especially if it's virtual at this point, like two different, like a weekend meeting or a uh, maybe some people can do during the day and some people want to do at night or later at night. Um, but it maybe couldn't hurt to just survey the families to see um, if there's a better time to get more families involved. I will add a little bit of input from the little bit of PTA experience I have from last year at my daughter's previous school. It was 99% um, white and of more um, affluent families. And the participation was astoundingly low for such a big school for so many wealthy families. <laughs> it, it was just astounding the, the few people that were engaged. And it seemed like the people that were involved, it was like the set 10 of us. We were the only ones taking care of everything all the time. And it was extremely hard to get even teacher participation because it was kind of like at the end of the school day, they're checked out and they're gone like immediately. So I don't know what the answer is to that. I'm hoping that because we're obviously in a very different setting here and we're in a new school, um, that that will be a completely different experience for me personally in PTA because <laughs> it was very disheartening to see that, especially with people who had the means and the time to be so involved. So I actually think that we have an opportunity to use something that we're already doing um, when we do the uh, pickup for the resources for the kids, we should use that opportunity because they're already driving to the school. We could spend five minutes because, you know, they're already going to be there. Spend five minutes just to talk to them about the PTA and try to get them at that point to sign up. Maybe it's a physical paper and we can digitally put it back into the system and we'll figure out the financial part after that. But just making sure that initial touch point isn't just a flyer, but it's a face-to-face -face interaction with the, with another parent, a board member, or maybe even a teacher who's a part of the PTA. I think that can be an initial first step because a lot of the um, emails become impersonal, impersonal, and it's easy to just overlook it. But when a person's there in front of you telling you about the, uh, the, um, the benefits of joining the PTA and how they can be a voice for their child and other children to come, I think it, it, it brings a, a larger impact in that discussion and you may get more participation and try to, try to break down all those barriers. Say it's not about social economical class. It's not about uh, race. It's, it's about your child. It's about our child, you know? So I think we could use that if we're still doing the pickups, maybe at the next, next pickup, we can try to organize something like that as a PTA. Right. That's, that's definitely a good point. We, uh, we did ask if we could do that, but unfortunately during this whole pandemic issue, um, we weren't allowed to be at the school. They're only allowing staff at the school, but we're definitely working with Ms. Jacobs and hopefully as soon as she, she lets us be there, we'll be there. Yeah. I, I, and, and I, and I love that idea too, because I think it's, it's more about the individual conversations you have with someone, right? Then, then how many times you send them an email or push them a flyer, right? And it, it's, it's that which kind of helps build that community that we want to build. Um, I, I do know, and, and we were really excited to have UK Health and Science do the pumpkin fitness um, with our scholars. And that was, that was really great just to see all of our scholars with pumpkins on the screen. Um, but even with that, 
they we were unable to allow UK to be there physically passing out the pumpkins or even to pass out anything within our swag bags. Um, and so so it's it's please just know like we would love to be able to offer that um, right now they're just really strict um, guidelines for safety and in which we all understand right um, we just have to think of other ways that we can be able to create those kind of uh, touch points. I will say uh, that our PTA, we got a lot of engagement. We had a, just a once a month evening family dinner and just had um, the, usually the PTA board cooked dinner for everybody. So it was just a big pot of chili or something like that. If there was something enticing like that, we also had the um, after school staff to stay and watch the kids while we had the meeting. And so a lot of people would come re repeatedly because they knew that um, we would be there with food. And so kind of looking at what are some of those barriers and what um, what could we, you know, offer that would allow people to participate who were otherwise not able to. Um, that was really, uh, that encouraged a lot of people to come who otherwise wouldn't have or couldn't have. Um, so, yeah, just want to throw that out there. But I think the idea of having something at the events, maybe we could have a little, um, I don't know, some sort of little gift or token or school something that said PTA that we gave out in the bags to encourage people to join or um something like that i don't know if there would be any swag or anything that the pta could possibly <laughs> get right now with no money but um yeah so. so i just want to bring up one small point i don't even know um maybe Dr. director jacobs could tell us um i know that the school that we were at previously um not all the parents understood what PTA was. I mean, we had a lot of other parents that weren't, you know, American born. So they didn't always understand that it was something for them to be involved in. Um, and I was also thinking that if we're gonna have um, parents for each classroom, they might be a good touch point because they're going to try to be making connections with the families. Um, but again, like it doesn't have to be face-to-face, -face, but even, you know, having a Zoom meeting with some of their families um, and they might be able to have a few more meetings where parents are available um, in a smaller group setting where people may feel a little bit more comfortable to ask questions. Um, I know in our last school, some of the parents were asking, like, we don't know what the PTA is, what they do. I don't know if I have the time to be involved. And sometimes those aren't questions that you're going to ask in a larger group meeting like this. So that's just my two cents. <laughs> Well, I appreciate all of you kind of jumping in and giving a heads up um, about how this is. One of the things I kind of um, would like to just throw out to ask, and you don't have to answer this at all, but just why why are you here? What made you join the PTA? I joined because my granddaughter goes to school there and I'm a very good big advocate of education for every child and even though I'm a grandparent I still want to be active in my granddaughter's education and then the other granddaughter that will be coming up not too long unfortunately right behind her so I expect a lot of you to be active in PTA unless the Lord calls me home. I know from previous experience with our PTAs, I think it's important to make the families realize that it's building a community and that it's not that you have to invest money into it, but it's really supporting not only the fellow other parents, but the teachers. So whether it be through room reps or teacher appreciation week, um, that we're not in this to just like to raise money necessarily, but really to more just keep the community building going on, especially in a time like we're dealing with now. A big reason why I am um, so involved and I make sure that Olivia sees how involved 
we are as parents is because I think it's very important as a role model for her to see my connection in the community and our connection in the community and in her school and in her classmates and teachers and forming that connection and how important that connection is over the lifetime instead of it just be like a fleeting passing moment of just first grade okay now moving on to second grade no this is a community and we all work together for the betterment of our school and everybody's ideas matter and I want to show her that and me as an adult with PTA so that she can be confident as well in her class and knowing that her opinion matters in her classroom as well. Thank you, Heather. I want to say that to that because that's why Danielle is active in this PTA because she watched me as her mom be active in the PTA and support the teachers and the educational benefits and be a partner in the group. All right, I think oh, go ahead. as an educator, I think it is important that we have this partnership and this community because we cannot do without your support and to know that this is like a family and we do this together and we all work together for the betterment of your child. That's why we're here as teachers to see that your child can achieve. And like Director Jacobs said, to break that ceiling, to break that glass ceiling and to make sure that your child is the best that they can be and achieve whatever they desire. And we, we are here because of, of your children and we want to show our support it's not just a parent you do for teachers it is a community it is what can we do to help parents and parents how can we help your child and making sure that all parents realize it's a community Well, thank you all for sharing uh, that. I know that's kind of like a tough question. There. Everybody's like, I don't, some of you have really strong feelings of why you joined and others are sitting back, not really sure. They just want to get involved to try to help as best they can. Um, so I we appreciate everything, every way you can do it. If it's just the donation, that's great. If it's the participation, that's even better. And if it's even, if it's the volunteer work, that's great. So no matter what you can do, you're helping. Um, I'm just moving on so we can get done here in the next 10 minutes. Lunch and learn topics. Are there any lunch and learn topics that you can think about that maybe, I mean, we just talked about some um, issues that we see maybe kind of holding us back. So is there any lunch and learn topics that we could use for maybe about an hour period of time to help get families involved? Kimberly, some of the things that some of the parents may be able to benefit from, I'm seeing this year, especially with all the Chromebooks, a lot of the parents are really, I would say, afraid of the computer, but that's not really the right term. They don't know enough about a computer to be able to be helpful to their children. I've seen in Victoria's classroom where parents have been struggling trying to help their child, maybe how to navigate through this technology mess that we've got going on right now to be able to better help our children which would also be helping the teachers so they don't have to spend as much time trying to walk the child through and the parent through how to do certain things i know technology is a big topic um krista put something about cyber security in there um if you can explain a little bit more, Krista, about cybersecurity and what you what you want in that area, um, either in the chat or explain, or you could even send a message later to explain that one a little bit. I think just a little bit about like, I know 
Stella can get on all sorts of sites in the middle of a Zoom and nobody realizes it. So, like, all of a sudden she's supposed to go to YouTube to watch a video, but that leads to another video, which leads to another video, which then... So it's kind of like, I think, back on what the previous person said, is just teaching us as parents how to make sure that they're not navigating to areas that they shouldn't be navigating to. Because a lot of these areas are very foreign to parents, I think. Sounds like a lot of people agree with that. <laughs> We're all sitting back just watching them do multitasking. What I just learned to do to, you know, not too long ago. <laughs> All right, so if you think of anything else, feel free to send us a message, um, like I said, through that email address, or um, you can still put it in the chat till we leave tonight, um, or join one of our groups to decide on the Lunch and Learns, get part of the volunteers, send it to us, and we will try to cover it, and uh, we want to get information out there. So that was part of the Lunch and Learn process, was to help parents feel more comfortable with some of these topics that, you know, the school is even dealing with that we don't know as parents. And we can also do a reverse type thing for teachers. Um, I know they're bombarded with other things, but Ms. Jacobs, if you can ever think of anything that the teachers want to know about, we'll, we'd be happy to kind of cover that topic to kind of get them involved with the parents as well. And they don't have to be teachers. We're not gonna make them teach the parents, but just kind of communicate and be involved with the, with the parents at the same time and learning together a topic. So something to think about. So moving along, Real quick, our next meeting is Monday, November 30th. Some of you asked about this whole Monday time frame. We do have a survey, a parent survey that we want to send out and ask parents and families and um, even the teachers what time works best for these meetings. But we didn't want to bombard families with more surveys since the school was still bogging people down with these surveys over and over again just to figure out what's going on with the virtual. So we do have a parent survey that will be coming out soon. but just to be aware, we are getting it out there and we are trying to make it better for everybody's schedule. Just for now, this was the only way to go to make sure that we could get rolling. Um, so definitely going to send surveys out soon. Just, just so you're aware, I'm sorry, it's another survey, but we have to do it too. Um, so that was the announcement for that. So our next steps are basically sign up for your member hub if you haven't with that link already, sign up to volunteer and meet the team in those links when you join the member hub after you get there you could just go to the signups and then contact us at the new email address rise stem pt at gmail for any questions or and if you have any questions about even signing up for member hub you can email that address as well so are there any other announcements that anybody else wants to share we need to know about All right, then if there's no other announcements, I appreciate you all participating today. And I am glad that you stayed here a little extra time. I know it's normally an hour, but because we're new, we have a lot of extra work to do. So thank you all for sharing. Thank you all for being here. And I hope that you can make the next one, even though it's another Monday, um, I hope you can make it. And please sign up to, for a, a membership committee as soon as possible. But if that's all, then I am going to adjourn the meeting at, what time is it? 726, John? And everybody is free to go. That's what I have, thank you. All right. So thank you all for coming. Thank you, everybody.